Welcome to the Fitchburg Cultural Council's second public grant review meeting. Today is Wednesday, January 20th, 2021. We're calling this meeting to order at 5.01 p.m. The Fitchburg Cultural Council is a nonprofit volunteer body that is part of the city of Fitchburg. We are part of a larger organization called the Massachusetts Cultural Council. And the Massachusetts Cultural Council is a wonderful organization. And the Cultural Council works to elevate our life here in Massachusetts and partners with communities across the Commonwealth to expand access, improve education, promote diversity, and encourage excellence in the arts, humanities, and sciences. It's a wonderful organization. We're all happy to be here tonight. So first of all, just a couple of housekeeping things for the public. This is being live streamed on Facebook. It's also being filmed by FATV and will be available for the public. The public does have the right to make comments as long as it pertains to the agenda. And since we have members of the public here tonight with us, we, and I'm assuming these are all visitors that have something to do with our grants that we're gonna review. So we'll let you guys go first after we run through a couple of housekeeping things in house. So to start off the meeting this today, we're gonna run through a few announcements. Um, I just wanted to mention that our member scene um, is going to be taking a leave of absence, a short period and um, due to family responsibilities. And also Le Leona has had a, um, a death and I would like to send flowers and or cards on behalf of our council. If anyone would agree with that, I will take care of it. Just wanna make you aware of that situation. Um, also, thank you all for being here tonight and for your volunteer activity. Does anybody else have any other announcements? Okay, so next we're gonna open up to the minutes. I just wanna get the minutes reviewed from the last cycle. We sent them around already. So I hope everybody had a chance to look at them. Audrey can share them on the screen. I'd just like to get those up. I have some comments on the meeting minutes when it's appropriate to speak. Go ahead, Joe. The um, grant for the dual pianists, which is listed in the accepted eligible grants, was actually voted that it was not eligible for funding, so that it needs to be moved into the other group. It's not eligible for funding? Correct. Okay. Um, I checked the roll call vote. Everything I'm about to tell you is I checked the roll call vote and the replay of the video just to make sure that uh, my assessment was correct on that. So dual pianist needs to move to the applications that were denied funding. Uh, and there were two other applications, I'm sorry, one other application that was denied funding that didn't make the list on either, either list. And that was the online play grant number 44901. And I believe it would be appropriate for us to list the four applications, the four grant applications that we tabled for tonight's meeting by name and grant number. Matt, I'm having trouble editing this document. So um, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back and uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, because it's like tables and stuff in here with the previous application. So, um, Matt, I can email you the details on those changes um, once it's approved. Okay. If that's okay, then I'll forward. Then I'll, I can, if I can forward the revised document afterwards, that would be great. Perfect. Thank you. So we'll move that to next meeting. So we'll jump into a treasure spot. If Jim, if you have anything you'd like to bring up tonight. This is your spot. Oh, Jim, you're on mute. Sorry. I don't know how that happened. How's that? Perfect. We can hear you. Okay. Um, I just want to kind of go through things in terms of the amount of money we have for granting and um, how we got to uh, the new figure that we have. Um, our local funds remain at $1,645. Um, our um, MCC funds of $6,841. And this is how it's broken down when I did the uh, section one and two of our annual report. 
um, that we have set aside 5% of our uh, allocation of $43,100 for administrative, and that is $2,155. We've also had the encumbered funds for the uh, three grantees that we granted extensions for next summer in the amount of 2,550. When you combine those two amounts and subtract it from the 68841, 6,841, you're left with 2,136. So uh, again, during section two of completion, the calculations allow us to take that money, add it to our FY21 allocation. So our new allocation amount for the uh, FY21 is $45,236. Thank you very much, Jim. That's excellent information. I know that's in the document already. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, any no question, any, anybody have any questions? Nope. No. Okay. Thank you very much, Jim. Okay, um, Eileen, do you have any updates for us? Um, I, not really, but I do have a couple questions. I have been working on uh, finding all the um, all the uh, and all the people who have money, and I'm about two thirds through finding them and finding out what they're going to do. But what I'm wondering about now, after this segment, is that when I send letters to those who are not going to be funded? It would be after we finish the book. Yeah. Right, oh, Joe? Uh, uh, once, the council, once the council has decided eligibility, those that are not eligible can then be sent the letters. Okay, so that should happen tomorrow, beginning to I'll send it out tomorrow. Yes. Yes, and um, they still have, well, I, I, I know that there's a, we have a, a text, le a template letter, but um, they have an opportunity to um, question that or ask us about it, right? Yeah, the stipulations about uh, what constitutes an appeal are listed in the in the document that we mail to them. Okay, fine. That's all. Thank Eileen, you. did you receive um, the um, response from Lisa Adams? She has completed um, her extension form. Extension. Yes, I saw that. Excellent. Perfect. All right. Thank you guys very much. Now we're going to turn it over to Audrey for a minute. We are actively looking for new members um, for the council in the years to come. And Audrey put something together for us. She'd like to do some promotion to um, the public seeking new members. So Audrey, did you want to show everyone? Yep. Um, can everyone see that? Yes. So um, basically, I don't know if it, it might be difficult to read over Zoom, but it says, Represent your community. FCC members decide which arts, science, and humanities projects have public benefit and grant states money for Fitchburg. Learn more by attending our meetings on Zoom. We meet regularly every third Tuesday of the month, 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. And then the speech bubbles have the same thing written in Spanish, Chinese, Vietnamese, and um, Portuguese, although, Portuguese is very similar to Spanish, so we could also change that to um, like Korean or I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I chose languages kind of randomly. Um, I believe Claudia was uh, gonna look into um, finding out from Fitchburg Public Schools what um, are the most popular languages. I have, I have the uh, percentages um, when you, when you finish, would you like me to just read what I have? Oh, I mean, you could probably do that right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to interrupt you. Oh, no. Okay. So, um, first of all, um, I spoke with the person that is uh, in the Title I grant office, and I asked her for the, the four, uh, four different languages or the top four languages that they work with. So Spanish uh, speaking students came in at 82%. 
but it drops off dramatically. Um, Hmong students represent only 4.43. Haitian Creole is 2.7% and Portuguese is 2%. But um, having said that, um, she will be able to help me um, get the translation uh, if, if and when we need it and want to do that. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, I can change those speech bubbles to those languages. And if you guys like what's written there, um, I can send that to Claudia and she can um, send that to uh, that person to translate. Well, I'll um, go right over to her office and, and talk with her directly. Uh, she has many hats, as they say, and she's very good at doing it and very willing to share her knowledge and help someone that needs to have translation. So I'm, I know we can accomplish this. Thank you very much, Claudia. Thanks. Thank you. So Audrey, I understand that you wanted to also get some of these printed to put around town. Do you have a quote for us on printing? Yeah, um, so I made a list of about um, some places that I thought would be good to share, um, share the flyers. Um, I was thinking about um, in order to diversify um, our membership, um, sending it to um, putting up flyers in not only supermarkets, because I mean, like, you know, it's COVID, like, how many places are people going these days? It's just, like the supermarket and like maybe the laundromat and, <laughs> um, and like going to restaurants to pick up takeout. So um, I was thinking heading up the different supermarkets, including like the Asian supermarkets and Spanish supermarkets and African supermarket, um, convenience stores and um, ethnic restaurants, pizza places, coffee shops. Um, but all that, like, it's only like about like, like less than a hundred. So I feel like hundred is, 100 is a good amount. And I made it so that it's black and white. So it would only be 10 cents each. Okay, so what's the total? Anybody do math fast? I mean, be $10. Yeah. All right, so does anybody have any questions or comments or suggestions? I, I do. I, I just want to reiterate my concern that we should try to attract a uh, uh, an accountant. I think Jim backs me on this. I do. Yes. I don't think you know. I I think what, what you're doing, Audrey, is separate from. We probably do a more targeted thing. I'm yeah. thinking maybe like writing a letter to a big accounting firm because accounting firms always have to. Their people always have to get out in the community. So suppose I draft a letter like that, and maybe at the next meeting, you know, we can talk about that. How's that? I think that's a great idea. Sounds good. I think someone with a financial background would be very helpful. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Okay, good. Thanks. So we're going to use that on social media. Claudia is going to get some language adjustments for us. I think it's good to do both. And oh, um, I created a separate one for social media, which is very similar, but it's just a square. I don't know if you guys want to see it. Sure. Okay. This gray area yeah, should not be here. It's actually easier to read for social, Audrey. Yes. I like it. Yeah, I like it. It's easier to read. Yeah. yeah. And then I figured that in description, we can put more information on there. Yeah. Everyone okay with your picture? I oh, love it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I like mine, I look smart. <laughs> I love the way I look like, I think they look like car, little cartoons. Yeah, they, they are, yeah. yeah they do. A little comic strip. And I have, uh, strips, yeah. is Jesse here? He's not. Oh. oh. Should I give her the speech bubble to someone else who can um, <laughs> be okay with being the person speaking? <laughs> That's okay. I'm sure she'll love it. Yeah, I'm sure she'll love it. 
Sure, yeah. Sounds good. Um, and then the last thing for a call for membership. Um, uh, so normally we speak at DFN, like discussing Fitchburg Now and Barbara and you, and I was brainstorming and thinking about um, other ways that we can outreach. And I thought about um, the Young Coffee Network, which um, was formerly known as the Yo Daddy Do Show. Um, and so they have a podcast, a video podcast that they post on Facebook and it attracts a lot of people a lot of young people um, and um, and so I thought it would be a good idea asking if um, we could be on their show. So I, I put it out there to Derek, your daddy though, um, if he would be interested in having us as guests and he said yes and that they would have availability next Monday at 6.30 p.m. and the show is live. So I want to talk to you guys about that, see whether or not you thought it was a good idea and who would be interested on in being on the show. I think it's a great idea. I think anything like that you can do is that, you know, we can get the word out about us is a great idea. But with, I'm not volunteering to be on the show because I'm just too new. I just don't uh, feel like I could answer all the questions. Okay, I'm, commi I'm committed until 6.30 on the dot. So um, I probably wouldn't be able to arrive for show prep. So I don't know if I'd be a good candidate, but uh, I love the idea and Derek show is, it's, it's fun. It, uh, it'd be a fun show to attend. I would like to volunteer myself. Awesome. There you go, Audrey. Perfect. Perfect, yeah. Um, and I'm willing to be on it too. Great. Um, well, I think those are great representatives. Yes. I agree. So Audrey, did, did you get everything you need from us? Information, feedback? Um, did you guys like the text? Did you want me to change the text at all? I think it looks perfect. It looks good as long it as you great. Yep. adjustments. Fantastic. And then I guess uh, voting on, um, oh, last thing is uh, if uh, we vote to print out that flyer, um, I would like volunteers to help me with. I make a motion out. to print that, that flyer. I second it. A motion from Audrey and a second from Eileen. All a motion from Miriam. Miriam. We'll have to do this by roll call. So we're going to move it. To <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah, I gave a motion. <laughs> Tamar, your vote? Aye. Miriam? Aye. Claudia? Aye. Casey? Aye. Matt? Aye. Audrey? Aye. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Aye. It's approved unanimously. Thank you. And uh, uh, Audrey, I volunteer to pass some of them out when they're printed. I'd be happy to. Yes, thank you. Uh, me as well. Thank you. I'll send you and guys I email. will too. Awesome. Um, I'll send you guys an uh, email with um, some of the places and maybe we can like hit up certain neighborhoods. Okay. Kind of thing. That way, I'll, yeah. All right, so Eileen, Claudia, and Casey. Gracias. All right, now we're moving into the grant. So we're gonna- Hey Mar, I'm sorry to, sorry to interrupt. I have a membership related statement I'd like to make. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, and I'm just trying to bring up my notes real quick. So I was approached by New View Communities and Fitchburg State University to join a forum of panelists to discuss diversity and inclusion within the city of Fitchburg and the different, uh, there are elected officials and others uh, around the city departments and such that were invited to to have a, this forum where um, folks who have been involved in this sort of thing have, can um, share their experiences and what have you. And one of the things I've been asked to do is to talk about how we've used diversity and inclusion and, uh, and, and diversified our own cultural council during the time where I was chair. And I just wanted to let everybody know that that was actually happening. And there would be a, um, there's a workshop that's associated with that, that uh, all these attendees, uh, invited attendees would work together to share knowledge. And it's, uh, it's come about as part of the National Night Out effort and also some of the steward programs that New View 
has in place in trying to exp expand the um, diversity and inclusion uh, within the city of Fitchburg. And Joe, what's the date, the time, and is it or is it open to us to attend? It's, um, it's an invitation. It's an invitation workshop only. There's about 70 or so people um, already committed into it, and it's hosted by Fitchburg State. It'll be this Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. And I. I believe it's going to be recorded, or at least the findings of that will be made public because it's part of a part of a, um, a Fitchburg State um, effort to um, to promote this diversity and inclusion effort. Well, well done, Joe. Is there anything the council can do to help? Um, nope, not at this time. I think that um, they're they're really interested in what we did as a council to to uh, become the most diverse council. Um, in the city, and um, I think that all of us had a hand in doing that, and they'll be sure to give credit to the council for their cooperation and understanding to do that. So I think I can handle it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Joe, for telling us. Anybody else have other announcements or com comments before we move into the grants? Okay. I'd like to work with our guests here first. So we have on the table, and maybe Eileen, you can we need to re-review from last week St. Bernard's Apple Wild, and I think we have Worcester and Winchenden with us tonight, if I'm not mistaken. Could yes. you guys introduce yourselves? Or Eileen, could you introduce them? Um, well, from um, Win Winchenden, we have Andrew Arsace and John Arcaro. Uh, Andrew is the, um, the uh, I guess, the moderator, the uh, executive director. What do you call yourself, Andrew? Yes, hello everyone, thank you. Um, director is fine. Director is fine, okay. And John O'Caro of Berkeley Music is um, uh, a, a director. We also have Tracy, Ka Tracy Krause from the Worcester Chamber Music Society Orchestra. Um, you're, or, no, I know it's not, I'm sorry, society. And um, your executive director? I'm the founder and executive director. Yeah. Founder and executive director. So we invited you here because we wanted to know more about your particular organizations and how you plan to uh, work with Fitchburg on it. Okay. So on the on the specific grant, right? On the on the specific grant, okay. yes. Yeah. Uh, so what, well, just really quick, why don't we start with Winchenden? We'll just go in alphabetical order, and Winchenden, just so everybody can get there, is on page one thirty nine in the grant book. Really quick. Thank you. Um, firstly, thank you for, for having um, John Akara and myself. Uh, I served on the Winchenden Culture Council for several years, uh, so I know uh, what's involved with the, with the council. So, you know, thank you for your, your service to the general area. Um, I served as secretary and, and chaired the, the Culture Council in Winchenden for, for several years. So I know what's involved um, in enriching the, uh, the general area. But um, Miss Berger uh, invited um, someone from the festival uh, to join the meeting. Uh, so I thought um, I would join and then John Accaro uh, is on the board and he uh, is a wonderful jazz musician who's played through the festival as well. Uh, so I thought, you know, we both could just say a few quick, quick words. Um, if there are any direct questions, um, please let us know uh, or I could just give some very quick background information about the festival. Does anyone have any questions before he starts? Mostly, I think what we're wondering is how this is going to work for Fitchburg because um, we're excited about the idea of the music festival, but how will that involve our Fitchburg people? Of course. Um, yes, yeah, so, um, uh, and actually before I begin, I know Tracy, um, she and I are, are colleagues, so just a quick hello <laughs> to her. We've, we've played together in Worcester and in other areas. Um, but uh, to answer your question, uh, in full honesty, we haven't presented any Fitchburg artists, uh, but we have pulled Fitchburg audiences. Um, for instance, in 2019, um, which is when we held uh, live concerts, um, I remember speaking with two individuals and I believe they were either patrons or um, individuals associated with the Fitchburg Art Museum. Um, I also, uh, you know, have spoken with people from Worcester. So we've pulled audiences from a number of areas. Obviously, um, the focus is Winchenden, uh, but we've expanded and we've really been pulling audiences from a number of uh, towns, um, trying to enrich the general area. Uh, and so, you know, as I mentioned, um, we have pulled uh, people from Fitchburg and Worcester and, and even as far as Boston and Cambridge. Uh, and just to give you a quick idea, um, 
obviously the Winston and Cultural Council has has helped uh, fund some of these programs. Um, Ashburnham uh, contributed funds uh, um, last year, as well as Gardner, Templeton, and Warwick. So we've tried to partner with surrounding towns uh, to produce these programs. Uh, the programs, I work as a classical musician. Um, John has led a jazz program, and then we try to offer a variety of classical jazz and world programs each year. Uh, the programs are all free to the community, uh, which allows people to explore. And obviously it's very hard to make the finances work, uh, but that's an important element for me to, to retain, uh, to really have free programs. Um, and these are, are very much, uh, you know, local, national and international artists um, who pass through, um, which obviously in the, you know, moving forward will be harder with COVID. Um, and to answer what I'm sure is a question everyone is thinking about, um, you know, how do, how do we move forward with, with the arts um, in a, you know, COVID world, because um, we're certainly not out of it yet. Uh, and to answer that question, um, I think we, like most arts organizations, are in a very difficult position because we're in a state of limbo. Um, it's very hard to move forward uh, with any plans because we're not sure when we can actually produce and present uh, live programs. Um, there's certainly potential for outdoor programs in the summer. Uh, we usually hold the concerts in June, uh, but it much will depend on where we uh, we are with the with the pandemic, um, with vaccines, et cetera. Uh, if we can do several outdoor programs, we will, uh, and we may have to wait longer for indoor programs. Uh, but to, in general, we um, we we've tried to attract. Um, uh, audiences from the general, you know, area. I mean, that includes Winchin and, and really plus minus an hour uh, surrounding the, the community. What would be, um, it seems to me that Winchin isn't that far away. You're asking for a thousand dollars. Why not have um, a concert in Fitchburg? That's a great uh, question. I mean, we, Never have. I mean, we've 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 always had um, the concerts uh, in Winston. And I think John and I, as well as the board, would probably welcome that idea. Um, you know, there's no reason why we couldn't um, expand outside of uh, Winston. And obviously, if the cultural council allocates um, funds, I mean, we could certainly do a concert. You know, with Fitchburg funds within uh, within you know Fitchburg, as well as the the concerts in Winston. And um, other culture councils haven't proposed that idea. Uh, but that's certainly a wonderful idea. Um, we've we have uh, lots of great venues here, and yes. plus, if you're trying to build your audience for concerts that you're having in Wichita, it'd be terrific if you came here. And I think we'd like to work with you on it if we just decide to go that way. Thank you very much. And maybe, you know, John can just say a few quick words since he he's sitting here with us. Um, he he's handled the um, uh, you know the jazz program uh, each year, and occasionally we've had other jazz acts. But he. Um, he has Winchin in connections, but he uh, he lives in Dover. Uh, so, you know, as I mentioned, we pull artists from New England, but we also have attracted um, some of my you know colleagues who before COVID, um, you know, would be touring often. Uh, it, it's hard to know what that will look like in the future, but but maybe yeah, maybe John could say a few words about his you know connection, etc. John, you have to unmute. There thank you. you. It's a pleasure to be here among you, and thank you for all your for arts, arts service, so to speak. Um, I'm a pianist and a, and a faculty member at Berkeley College, but um, and I also have uh, family ties to, to Winchenden. Um, but um, it's been a pleasure for me to lead groups, uh, jazz groups specifically there. Uh, we had a lot planned for 2020. Um, I'm, I've been a leader of my own group, um, usually a quartet, a quintet, and one year a sextet, I believe. And, and this uh, past year in 2020 planned to be, I'm also a member of the, uh, for example, the Worcester Jazz Orchestra, a longtime member. So we had a, um, a plan to present the Worcester Jazz Orchestra at, a, at one of our concerts. And of course, it's all been disappointing 2020 uh, for us and for everyone. But uh, that being said, um, 
Andrew has done, uh, well, so not only am I a, a pianist and band leader, but um, I'm a member of the board of the Winchin Music, happily, of the Winchin Music Festival. And, um, you know, uh, Andrew's done a great job in leading some, um, leading with ideas to do some virtual uh, performances, substituting for 2020. And I was, was my pleasure to lead my group and two, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the term driveway concerts um, that were posted. And Andrew has also led um, some groups. This was a, in order to substitute for uh, live concerts that were planned well in advance uh, for 2020, which was uh, the fifth year of the festival. So um, Andrew, do you wanna chime in about uh, the, the other uh, offerings and uh, virtual offerings that you've? Sure, we, I mean, just very, very quickly, because I know everyone um, uh, is busy and I'm sure you have much else to discuss, but we, as John mentioned, we had 12 concerts planned, um, which was a stretch, but we were able to secure the funds last year. Um, as I mentioned, uh, several culture councils as well as um, foundations stepped in. Uh, but we had several classical programs uh, as well as, uh, you know, John's jazz program, the Worcester Jazz Orchestra, um, Jop Terlinden, a fantastic Dutch cellist uh, and others. Um, uh, we had several world programs like up. So we had 12 concerts lined up, um, but much of what we can do is dictated by the funds. Um, and, you know, we try to allocate plus minus a thousand dollars for some of the, you know, very small programs. And then um, obviously uh, several thousand dollars for more of the chamber and, and larger programs. Uh, so and just to give you an idea um, with some of the other culture councils, uh, funds have ranged from several hundred dollars to, you um, you know, thousand, two thousand, and upwards. Uh, so I appreciate that funds are very limited. Um, I know again because I served on the Winston Culture Council, and we um, had a similar budget to Fitchburg. So I, I appreciate that funds are very limited. Um, uh, it would certainly be wonderful to you know explore the idea of doing a concert in Fitchburg. I think John and or I um, you know would be happy to do something, and we would you know discuss it with um, with our board. Uh, so. For instance, if funds are very tight, um, we could probably uh, do something, you know, with less than a thousand dollars. But obviously, um, you know, much of what we can present, whether it's a solo artist or you know a chamber ensemble, or in, for instance, in 2020, we were hoping to present the Worcester Jazz Orchestra. That was a much larger ensemble, um, you know, requiring uh, larger funds. We've also um, been in touch with some some of the smaller um, culture councils like Ashburn Ham, uh, Templeton. Sometimes we've uh, if we've received uh, 200 or $300 from one console, we'll, sometimes we'll partner and, um, you know, ensure that we can maybe do a program with joint funds. Uh, so, you know, $200 from one council, an individual donation, et cetera. So we, we try to be in touch with the individuals, businesses, and, and you know, organizations that have supported. Uh, we try to be very transparent about that. But um, and again, it's it's very hard to make the finances work, but I think it's important to retain that the, the concerts are free and that people have a chance to explore, um, you know, genres. Does anyone else have any questions for John or Andrew? Um, do you guys have a letter of support from a Fitchburg uh, resident or partner or... No, we don't, not at the moment. Um, I could probably check back uh, with some of my notes. Um, I know I mentioned this couple that I, I spoke with in 2019, um, connected with the Fitchburg Art Museum. Um, I could probably check through um, some of my notes about um, you know, if any individuals who have donated live in Fitchburg. Um, you know, we have a long list of, of individuals who've contributed. And to be honest, I mean, some, some individuals have, have donated um, you know, $10, $20 and others have donated far more. Um, so we, you know, I, we've tried to cultivate, uh, you know, a community, uh, not to diminish, you know, ten or twenty dollar donations. Um, so we have a, a long list. I can certainly check, um, you know, names and addresses um, if you'd like a, a letter of support from, you know, someone who lives in, in Fitchburg. Yeah, it's one of our requirements. Um, <laughs> so I, I would, um, I think this sounds like a really uh, great event, um, but I think that is something that is. Uh, 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 stopping me a little bit. <laughs> of course, yeah. So I would be happy to table this if that would be okay until you guys have a letter of support. 
Actually, Audrey, we can do a roll call vote to approve this conditionally and distribute the funds. Uh, so and what, and what would the condition? Out. What would the conditions be? If we've been approved, we sign off. So you, just sorry to interrupt. Should we sign off just to to uh, if you'd like to discuss it more openly? That's probably a good idea. <laughs> I, I just know because uh, with my time with the with the Winch and Culture Council, often you know if anyone's connected in a way, um, we would uh, always excuse you know ourselves. Um, and obviously, okay. you should you should feel like you can talk openly without um, you know having John and, and myself and and or Tracy um, you know present. Okay, I think that's probably a good idea. Um, <coughs> lovely having both of you, and it sounds like an exciting cross. You know, I think I'm going to look up Winchenden anyway. Sure. But, Thank you. So much. Yeah, there there are some uh, some nice videos from uh, 2019 and 2020. Um, you know, several articles written in in the Gardener and Worcester and other outlets. Okay, all right, that'd be fun to look at. Thank you. Thank you. Did I have one? That? I have one more. Oh yeah. Go I, ahead, Miriam. I, 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 I enjoyed both hearing, listening to both of you, and you did an excellent job in presenting what you do. Um, but we, what we need to do is get that letter of support. And also, Eileen, um, will you be willing to find out for um, to find another venue for them? I'd be to, happy to work with them. Yeah, to to play. Okay, if, if we sure. just if we. You know, if we can have it here and we can work that out. I mean, it's also up to you whether you can work that out too. Mm -hmm. But yeah. in the event that um, you want to do something here, I'd be happy to work with you. Good. Thank you. Um, my question is, so is this an in-person festival? The plan is for in-person? Well, uh, until uh, COVID hit, yes. I mean, we've always had concerts, <laughs> um, uh, two venues. And then in 2020, we added a third venue, but um, we couldn't move forward with any of those programs. It would have been reckless. Uh, we we offered several digital programs uh, through YouTube and and quite honestly, um, Winchin is about plus minus ten thousand people and the videos we released um, have attracted well over ten thousand views. So we've you know in a way we've we've reached far more people through the digital series than we ever have in the past. Um, you know through through the very intimate venues that we use in Winchin. Uh, one is a 19th century congregational church, another is the Historical Society, and then we partnered with the um, Beals Memorial Library uh, in 2020. Uh, the hope is to offer live programs. I mean, that's far more important. Uh, I think so much of that will depend on state regulations, where we are with vaccines, et cetera. I mean, it's it's very hard to know. Uh, un you know, unfortunately, we just can't move forward until we know more. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. But we, we do try to plan one to two years out, which... Uh, you know, again, it's very hard. I mean, so if we can move forward, um, you know, in 2021, uh, we have a much tighter schedule. Um, it certainly can be done, uh, but, um, you know, we, like most arts organizations, are in the same position here. Yeah. Well, you may, <laughs> add, may I ask you uh, if you would uh, tell the council how they might uh, have access if they wanted to view our uh, online uh, concerts? Sure, I, um, Ms. Berger, I can send you an email with, uh, you know, the YouTube link, uh, some of the news articles, et cetera. That'd be great, and I'd spread it out to everybody else. Thank However, you. you are on Facebook Live right now, so okay. feel free to promote right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks Thank you. very much. All right, guys, so we'll put it to a vote. What, do you want to wait? So I'm not no, here. I think, why don't we just wait until Tracy? Yeah. Um, I don't think it's fair to Andrew to vote without me here. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Tracy, are you from the Worcester Chamber? Or I am the director, executive director of the Worcester Chamber Music Society. Okay. All right. So, but there's a connection, which is why you prefer we wait. I, I just think it's kind of awkward for you to vote on Andrew's proposal with me here. But if you feel I like agree. you want to go ahead and do it. I can um, change Tracy to an attendee so we don't see her oh, video. Well, I, if you don't mind, I'd rather it's 20 of six um, <laughs> yeah. and you just gave Andrew about 20 minutes. So I'd rather if we could so do this go now. To your, go to your grant then. Your grant is on page 132 for everybody. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Tracy? And Tracy, let us know what you'd like to tell us. 
Sure. Well, first, I'd like to start. I, I, I've communicated with two of you this last year, and I don't know if the two of you know this, but um, just want to, this isn't about this grant. We received a grant, uh, was it last year, for a concert yes. that we did in Fitchburg at the Fitchburg Art Museum. Yes. Um, and it was, ex we got an extension because that had to be canceled. And it was supposed to happen this April. And we just made the decision to cancel it. We, we spoke with Fitchburg. The space is, I mean, the museum, the space is too small to do anything in person there. So we will not be playing that program um, at the Fitchburg Art Museum in April. So that was- Will you be returning the money then? Uh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, um, so that's the first thing. So, so we do have a relationship with a venue in, in Fitchburg. We love playing at the Art Museum. It's just a fabulous museum. And I love great yeah. relationship with Nick. And so uh, we've, been in, in, we've been around since 2006. This is our 15th season. We play 17 concerts a year um, in Worcester and surrounding towns, which include Fitchburg and Harvard and We've done Grafton, we've played Winchenden, we've played um, uh, Central Massachusetts is our um, footprint. Um, and so part of our series each year is a free family concert that we do in Worcester. And uh, the reason why we haven't done it anywhere else is because we attract over a thousand people. We need a big venue. Uh, it's a free concert. It's a fabulous community event. And um, we've been doing it for the last 10 years. And with the pandemic, um, we were trying to figure out, you know, how we could bring music to our smaller towns that we that we serve. And so this grant proposal, we're offering our um, free family concert that we did in 2018. We did Peter and the Wolf at Mechanics Hall for a thousand people. And uh, it was videotaped. It was a, we have a great recording of it, and we would like to, we we're offering it for free through our virtual platform to all the surrounding towns in the area. Um, we uh, we've been uh, actively engaged in virtual programming um, all year, really since we started doing virtual concerts um, this uh, last summer. So we have our own um, virtual platform that we that we access through our patron manager server, and um, we've done uh, six live stream concerts since September. We have another one coming up in January, um, and another one in April, um, and then we have we're offering this video that we will do through our. Uh, platform, which will include a live Zoom chat with the musicians at the end of the video. So we think it, this is a great way to reach kids right now that can't come to live performances you know, in person because that just can't happen. And by the way, speaking of in-person performances, and I will contact Andrew, I was in a meeting today. I'm also the um, the direct, uh, I'm, I'm the president of the board of the Worcester Cultural Coalition. And we had a meeting today with Dr. Maddie Castile, who is on the ground with what's going on with COVID and vaccines. And they don't think we're gonna be able to be in person with in-person performances till the end of 2021. Mm. Yeah, that, that's, that's what we were told today. So um, we are really, we've been working hard all season on playing virtual performances with live streamed and recorded and to give people the best experience possible in, in uh, certainly unideal, uh, not ideal uh, situation, right? We would all rather be in person. Um, we've had a great deal. How do you market your performances? That, that's right. So that's a part of it. So the really nice thing that, the, you know, the silver lining to everybody being online all the time is that everybody's online all the time. So <laughs> we have invested um, much of our marketing budget into digital advertising. So we're doing very little print. Um, we've had a lot of success with Google ads. We've beefed up our website. Um, we are doing, you know, certainly paid Facebook and, and, that, and social media, but really it's the Google ads that are making a difference um, for us. And we have a marketing coordinator who is really, you know, she's, up to speed on best practices and and so we've had we've had fabulous success with our live stream audiences this season. 
And as Andrew said, we've been able to attract people from beyond our borders, which is, you know, I, it's just a, a win-win for everybody. So um, we, because we um, have been doing these family concerts for a really long time, we would be, we would use our, our other marketing channels that we use for our family events. So we would contact, for example, the local libraries. Um, we would contact the schools to see if we can get into their newsletters, their bulletins for their students. Um, and I know this is doable because we've already talked to the um, several of the school principals in Worcester. So they'd be able to push out this particular concert on their um, in-school networks. Um, we will be reaching out to music teachers at the local schools in Fitchburg um, to let them know about the program. Peter and the Wolf is a piece that is generally in many music curriculums. So, um, so it's something that most music teachers are very familiar with. Um, uh, the, the video itself it is, and the performance was, it's an excellent performance. It was very lively. We have a fabulous narrator who is very engaging. He's dancing all over the stage and playing all the parts. And, um, and he's our, um, our narrator extraordinaire we use for all of our family concerts. Um, you know, we've done this family event for 10, as I said, for 10 years. We've done Peter and the Wolf several times. We did Carnival of the Animals last year with the Worcester Youth Ballet. Um, we've done Pinocchio's Adventures in Funland and all kinds of fun, fun pieces. Um, and it, it is one of our signature events that we're quite proud of. Um, it, it, it makes, it, it just feels good to the musicians to be able to give in, giving back this way. Um, so looking ahead, when would you, if you were going to do this, when would you plan it for? We're, we've already planned it. It's March 7th, um, 2021. Um, oh, it's this year. Oh, okay. No, no, no. It's, it's a virtual event. We're yeah. not, it's not in person. But so, you haven't done marketing in Fitchburg. I mean. No, we haven't done, we haven't started our marketing yet. We're, we'll, okay. we'll start our marketing um, beginning of February. So our contribution would be largely helping you to market it. So that it That's can... yeah. We're only asking money from the local cultural councils for marketing. Uh, and so, you know, because the, the musicians have already been paid, you know, they really, the, ex the expense for us is marketing. Um, and, and uh, you know, the, the more money we can put into marketing, the, the wider we can get the word out um, to residents of all the local towns in the area. So I think it's exciting. I actually am a personal fan of Peter and the Wolf. Yeah, aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> and yes. I, I, I honestly, I, I'm also the flutist in the group. So oh, you that's are. me oh. on stage with the bird and all that stuff. So oh, yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions for Tracy? Is there yeah, but you, uh, you know, one more question regarding marketing. You will be marketing to the Fitchburg Public Schools yeah. through other music departments? So the way that we're going to target our marketing to each town is, is, is for two ways. One is in our, uh, our Google advertising. We, were actually, can, we can actually direct the ads to go to Fitchburg residents, right? That's, that's, the really be that's the beauty of digital advertising. And then to target each town, yes, we will contact each school um, and there'll be like a digital flyer and you know the wording that they can put out in their newsletters so they can share it with their families. Yeah, Thank you, you. Make, make it easy as possible. <laughs> and also put it out to the public library. Any, any platform in the city that is doing uh, digital marketing that they're, that they're getting the word out through whether it's their website or they're sending out emails to their patrons. I have a comment. Yes. Um, Fitchburg High School's uh, band teacher has been just such a, a godsend in this dark winter of times. Um, she, I've watched what she's put on uh, digitally. Well, it's not digitally, virtually. And she, she has a small band. And she's been trying to grow it uh, little by little, but it's she's very creative. And I, if you want to contact the high school about yeah. her, mm -hmm. I would recommend that. I'm writing it down. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it could be good for a virtual field trip. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the nice thing about the video is, you know, we're going to release it on March 7th, but it will be available for a week. So people can either watch it when we release it, which is when we'll have the live Zoom chat afterwards, or they can choose to, you know, view it at a later time. So if they want to view it in their, in their, during their class period, I mean, there's lots of opportunities. Is it something that local ac access TV could also? Actually, yes. Play? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. we, we put it up on our platform, but we also put it up on YouTube, which you could probably access it that way, or we can send it to you directly, whichever works. Maybe you, our, should, um, we sh you should reach out to Nate from FATV who may or may not be listening right now. Um. <laughs> okay. That would be great. Yep. Tracy, I have a question about the, uh, one of the questions in the application. I just would like to get cleared up a little bit. Sure. So um, as, as a council, would we, when we grant funds, we grant that with the intention that the funds will be spent. And um, there was an answer to one of the questions that, um, let us to believe that it might not actually, your event might not actually happen if we don't provide funds. And that was with the, the question about um, if you don't receive all the funds from the other LCCs, you will just not have the event at all. So is, is this, this showing of the video actually contingent upon the other cultural councils also contributing their portions to your event? Or will yes, it still go yes. on for Fitchburg because Fitchburg donated? Well, we need to raise money to advertise it. So it, because this is a, a pandemic year, our funds are tight. So it's not something we can do without raising money to do it. Yeah. I think but Joe's question that, was if um, you don't receive the requested 300, does that mean that like you can't do the event at all or you just won't do ads targeted to Fitchburg? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> no, we would, I mean, if we, we, would, we would still do it, you know. Um, you're not going to leave a town out. <laughs> that, that doesn't feel good. No, we would still do it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Do we need a letter of support from uh, Tracy, um, even though she is a previous grantee? We do not technically need that since we have worked with her before. Right. Um, technical question, because I do need to return that $600 who do I send the check to? Um, I'm the treasurer, Jim Cragen. Okay. And it um, it would be the city of Fitch. Can I have your email and I'll send you the uh, specific information? Yeah, that'd be great. It's Tracy T R A. Uh, you're you're live on Facebook. Um. Oh, thank you very much. Um, why don't we? I can. I have Eileen's email, so I'll send it. Yeah, Eileen has it. Yeah, yeah. Eileen, Eileen. I don't have my email. Yeah. Yes, I do. I'll give it to you, Jim. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Eileen. Yeah. And just so you know, we are, we just scheduled uh, our concert at the Fitchburg Art Museum for April of 2022. <laughs> so, oh, great. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Anybody else? Any questions for Ms. Krause? Tracy, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Be well. Thank you. Thank you Good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Okay. Take care. Good night. All right. So where do we start? Shall we vote on um, Worcester first? Sure, since we're on the page, right? We're on the page. So it's page 133, 132-33. I make a motion that we approve this grant. I second it. Anyone speaking to the motion or we'll have Joe do roll call. All right, Joe. Before I do roll call, Matt, you're still recording the first and second. I am. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Miriam? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Eligible for funding? All right, let's do Winchenden on page 139. And we'll open that up the same if anyone would like to make a motion. Uh, motion to approve with the uh, letter of support contingency, so the letter of support. Do we want to um, make it uh, 
to have a, the concert in Fitchburg as part of the motion too? I don't know if we can do that. Yeah, I, I think just uh, with a letter of support should be fine for now, but I do definitely agree that encouraging a relationship with having them play in Fitchburg is a great idea. It yeah, might like, be logistically might be like difficult a... with the pandemic too to do that this year. I think it's, a, yeah, I think I agree with you guys. I think it's a lot to pull off a concert in a pandemic in a new town with new facilities, new relationships. If it's online, it's gonna be easy, but next year we should push now to plan for something next year. Yeah, and if they are applying to other councils, then they would have to change the application or they're creating a whole second event um, for us. Maybe we could ask them to have a virtual summer event for us. Maybe one concert, that would be fun. But we'd have to approve that amount now without that contingency. Well, I guess we're gonna prove we wanna do it. I mean, if they are gonna do it with us, they'll have to talk with us. I think we'd have to help them anyway. So why don't we just go ahead with Casey's? It's Casey's, Casey's down and dirty proposal. <laughs> could, could, yeah. Go ahead, Jim. Okay, well, so, someone just could read the, uh, what's the motion? So we have a motion from Casey to approve with a letter of support from a Fitchburg resident or organization. Uh, that, um, that, the, um, that the performance is here or that the performance is going to be in Winchington? Winchington. Yeah. Application as is. And now they would need to do is provide a letter of support from any individual in Fitchburg? That's what I want to clarify. So I feel like- Sorry, the Can I just put it up? I just want to make a point of order. There's a motion on the table. We really should have a second before we go into okay. the discussion, just mm -hmm. to say that the motion will, will have an opportunity to go for a vote. A second. Okay. My apologies, Audrey. Um, speaking to the, um, to the motion, um, on our council priorities, it's literally written, um, if you do not live or work in the city of Fitchburg, you're required to provide a letter of support from your project slash performance venue or a local partner. Um, but I feel like for other applications, we've kind of just been like, oh, they're a resident, so that works. Um, does local partner like mean like, they, like this Fitchburg person has to be like an active part of the planning? Uh, well, so I believe Andrew said that they have uh, donors from their fundraising um, who uh, presumably at least one of them lives in Fitchburg. So I believe what he was implying was he's going to reach out to the people who have made donations uh, for this he also, event. He also oh. said he has a relationship with the uh, Fitchburg art. You know, I'm sorry, too bad Jesse is in here. She could, she could help <laughs> us out with a couple of these things, but yeah. Uh, can I, can I say something? Uh, unless they have, for me, unless they have a, a venue here in Fitchburg as part of this grant, uh, for this grant cycle, I cannot support this. Um, we're committed to uh, open uh, programs for Fitchburg residents. Uh, Winchington is uh, 15 to 20 miles away, and it certainly doesn't broaden the scope for availability of uh, our citizens. So I cannot support it. But uh, I thought Eileen, where's Eileen? Did you, oh, there she is. Yeah. Eileen, um, I thought someone said they were going to explore the idea. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Well, can we do it conditionally? You know, um, so the letter reads, all right, you know, we'd like to work with you to bring your organization here. We've set aside so much money for it when we decide how much money we've set aside for it. And, um, but, you know, we're, we're really adamant about having it for our community. How about something like that? Joe, can you lend some direction here? So we could put it in conditions. We can put in any conditions we want, but we need to remember the spirit of what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make sure that the money that we give will be spent. And if they are not going to be able to meet those conditions, which I personally didn't get the sense that they would, uh, they seemed pretty intent on performing in Winchenden for their festival and maybe discussing it in later years to come out here. Um, I, I think that we would be putting $1,000 at risk 
uh, or up to $1,000, whatever we choose to fund this application, it would be at risk of not being spent and we would have to hold it in escrow until next year. You're saying if we put the contingency that it was moved to Pittsburgh? Correct. Or you're saying at all? No, co correct. I mean, if it was, we want, we need a letter of support from a Fitchburg organization. You know, th that is something that is reasonable that they could quick, quickly make a phone call. They have connections in the arts world here in Fitchburg uh, based on what they were presenting tonight. But uh, asking them to find a venue and work in it, like kind of like the same conversation we have with the last grant, new yeah. town, new people, new venue, like the whole thing, and try to get it all done for this year just doesn't seem like it would be a reasonable um, request for a condition. In our denial letter then, can we say that, um, we, that we very much like the idea, we just think it needs to have more, um, you know, we'd like to have, maybe come back the next time around. It, it needs more work. So the, de the denial letter is to contain the reason for the, um, the denial and strictly okay. based on what we require, not, we think it'd be great for you to do something different next year. That's, yeah. you know, that's not a conversation for the council to have. We have specific requirements that they need to meet. If we decide that they don't meet them, we vote no and we, we list exactly what condition they didn't meet. And it'll be up to them to inquire with the council later to say, well, what can we do? We really want to perform. We want to do something for Fitchburg. They can come to us and, and then we can discuss in more detail a little bit about their application. Okay, all right. Did anyone hear them mention how they're going to specifically like advertise to Fitchburg people? Like how Tracy did? No. Didn't ask either. So we have a motion on the table from Casey and a second from Eileen. Let's go ahead and do the vote. What are we voting on specifically? Well, I believe Casey voted to approve, right? Voted to approve with a letter of support, correct? Yes. And I lean second in, so can we go ahead and vote? Miriam? I'm a little confused. Okay. Well, would you, would, would you like me to elaborate on the question? Or do you have a statement well, I thought, like they were gonna, I thought someone was going to explore the, the idea of them playing here in Fitchburg, but they also have 12 virtual concerts um, so I don't know whether that's the way they're going to show what they do with their, with their virtual concerts, but they're also looking and we're trying to find a place here in Fitchburg for them to play. I guess, you know, that's, that's me wanting them to be here because I love a jazz festival, <laughs> but, um, but basically they, they haven't really, they, they haven't given us their full budget. You know, Joe's right. They really haven't planned this yet. And um, as much as um, I think it'd be a swell thing, but um, I'm not sure that they're gonna get it done given a lot of problems. So, however, I second- Well, raise well, well that's, the, that's part of the, the uh, when, when we reject this, this plan that they don't have a full budget here. So how could we- that's one of the problems. They don't yeah. have a full budget. They aren't sure where they're going to have it. I, you know, I don't want to belabor it, but it doesn't, as Joe pointed out, it doesn't meet, you know, our, our uh, criteria at this point. So, Miriam, the vote on the table for you is that we approve the project with the condition that they provide a letter of support from a Fitchburg organization. And you need to vote yes or no on that. Um, can I can I offer something else? If we drop, you know, I don't want to raise their hopes that if they get a letter of support in here, we're going to um, approve it this year, because it sounds to me that everybody has doubts about whether they'd be able to have it this year anyway, even if they got the letter of support. So maybe the motion should be changed to a yes or no. So that vote, that change to the motion is up to Casey. Casey, you can allow it to continue through vote. And if it fails, we could um, take another vote if so moved by the council. Uh, I would like to leave the motion as is, if that's all right. Okay. So the motion stays as is. I'm going to 
continue with the roll call vote. Uh, we're still at the first vote. So, Miriam? I say yes. Yes. Casey? No. Audrey? Yes. Tamar? No. Matt? Uh, no. Jim? No. Eileen? No. Sadly. Claudia? No. The motion fails six to two. It's not eligible for funding this year. I actually want to cry on that one. <laughs> what? I actually want to cry on that one. That was like giving birth. I feel sad. I feel sad. <laughs> I do too. I Can do. I lean in, uh, include in the letter, like, you know, we might consider it more next year if it was more directly related to Fitchburg to like, I don't know, give them a tip for next so, year because I know this is the second year, at least the second year that they've applied for this grant and both I times think failed. Audrey, I would recommend that you ask the Mass Cultural Council about that. I believe they're pretty strict on what's the, the reasons for denial and that's all that you provide in the letter. Oh. Uh, if, they, if they want you to provide additional advice, they may, ask you to go through a different channel gotcha. for that sort of thing. Okay, how about this, uh, Joe and uh, and Audrey? Suppose they just write something in um, and um, get see if they would approve that. Would be very tentative. Um, it would, you know, but uh, I, I just want to write something encouraging in it. <laughs> you mean that the Mass Cultural Council but, will approve uh, again, of your wording? Yeah. You'll need to get the Mass Cultural Council to advise adding anything more than what they recommend. One of, the, one of the things we have to remember is that we're a public entity and that we are not to be biased in any way with our decisions here in funding grants. And if we're giving real special advice on how to sway the council you know, to one and we're not doing it to others, it's not really fair. So oh. the, the Mass Culture Council may, may think otherwise, but that's why I recommend you talk with them. Okay. I mean, if they see the council priorities, the priorities say, Fitchburg, Fitchburg, Fitchburg. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it did say that. All right, let's move on. Let's go to Apple Wild, page 25. Number is that again? Excuse me? Page number? Page 125. Thank you. Thank you. Are you picking this one up from last week? Yes. Um, did we hear so back from them? We did. Um, so, Veronica. Um, said that if the private school is a nonprofit, then nonprofit organization, then yes, it does count. And I had Eileen uh, do some research for us to confirm that Abwild and St. Bernard's are nonprofits. And she said that they are tax exempt. And I assume that means that they're nonprofits then. Yeah. Yes, the, um, the, the, the one you might consider differently is St. Saint, Saint Bernard's because it's a, it's, a, it's a religious school. However, they have a 501c3 uh, IRS ex, you know, thing in, in addition to the, the religious school. So they are exempt and, um, and so is Apple Wild because they, they file an exempt tax. Thank thing. you for doing the research. So I'd like to get a vote on this tonight. So it's application 45362. The project was diversity and inclusion through the arts. And this is at Apple Wild. Would anyone like to make a motion tonight? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll move uh, that we, the, we approve it. Second. Eileen and Casey seconds. Anyone wanna speak to this motion or we'll do a roll call. Joe? Okay, Miriam? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. It is eligible for funding. Now let's go please to page number 63. This is the St. Bernard's application that we tabled last week. Application 46226, it's for student video production. So this, the same information would apply that Audrey mentioned. Would anyone like to make a motion on this application? 
I'll make a motion to approve. I second. I'll second that. So that was Matt, and I think Audrey you had your hand up second. Yes. Audrey, anyone want to speak to the motion? Let's do a roll call. Miriam? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. It is eligible for funding. Thank you. Now let's go to page 311. This is starting fresh tonight. This is the Friends of Friends of Fitchburg Abolitionist Park. Application ID 43195. This is a visual arts project. This is a request for a mural. Anyone have questions or comments about this application? I oh, thought it was great. I just thought it was awesome. That's just my take on the whole thing. It's in a great neighborhood, so. I think it's a great neighborhood. I think it's a great project. Um, I was gonna chime in before anyone spoke that um, no one needs to wait for Tamar to ask for motions. If you're so moved, just move. And uh, Motion to get, get things a little faster. There you go. What am I, too slow, Joe? Is that what you <laughs> Nope, not at all, not at all. There's just a lot of dead air. <laughs> so so we don't really need it. That was a motion from Casey and Miriam mm -hmm. second, I think, right? Yes. Okay. Joe? Anyone speaking to the motion? Okay. Miriam? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. And Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. It is eligible for funding. Okay, guys, page 318. This is John Root from Amherst, attracting birds, butterflies, and bees. It's a virtual Zoom project in the science category. Um, in past years, John Root has, um, he's a, a musical performer and has done some concerts in Fitchburg. I think at the library as well as our senior center. So he's someone known to us in terms of giving performances. Um, albeit this is uh, very different than his musical uh, his musical programs. And he has a letter of support from FATB. Yeah. I make a motion that we approve this grant. A second. A sec so that was Jim, Eileen, seconds. Anyone speaking to the motion? I have some concerns about a lack of a marketing budget again. Um, however, if he's going through FATV, I'm not sure if that is a like viable concern. Yeah, it sort of sounds like that he's putting it on maybe FATV to do it or something because he said he would create a press release and fly for posting and will promote all available media and cooperation consultation with FATV, but not like exactly like I am going to send it to here and here and here, post on Facebook. Looks like he's gonna create it and pay for FATV membership and they're gonna present it. Okay. He is also applying to like 60 L um, LCCs. Um, I don't know if he's asking for the same amount, but he did not include it in his, um, uh, description of funding sources for other income. Um, so I don't know if he requested 450 for like every single one of them. But I do really like that he has specifically partnered with FATV and FATV will air his program. Mm -hmm. Also certified by NOFA and NOFA is like an incredible, incredible agricultural organization. So he obviously knows what he's talking about. Yes. Awesome. Motion to approve. Yeah, we had the motion on the table from Jim and Eileen seconded. So we'll, everyone has spoken, I think. So we'll do a roll call, Joe. Hey, Miriam. Yes. Casey. Yes. Audrey. Yes. I'm sorry, Audrey, I didn't hear you. Yes. Tamar. Yes. Matt. Yes. 
Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. It is eligible for funding. And now it's page 329, Dr. The Machine Jesse Green from Medway, Mass. The project ID is 43213, Chainsaws, Cheeseburgers, and Rock and Roll, also online. Um, they do not have a letter of support from someone from Fitchburg, and they are not from Fitchburg. Um, I don't have to get one. <clears throat> I, I had kind of questions about this one. What are your questions, Claudia? Not that any of us can answer them, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. Everybody. Well, um, you know, some of these are not local and I'm sure, like I can't positive, but applying for my in other cultural councils and I, I don't see anything here that gives me that they're going to do it in Fitchburg. That was my feeling as well. I'm happy to move it uh, so we can take a vote, make a motion. Second. Yeah, to add on it, I don't think he ever mentions Fitchburg in his right. application. So he hasn't right. specifically said that he's going to reach out to Fitchburg schools or anything like that either. Yeah. There's so much stuff being shoved into school these days. He doesn't even have a school partnering with him that said we would like to do it, you know? Yeah, so, right. So I, I found it dubious. We have a motion on the Matt and a second from Casey. Anyone else speaking to the motion? I think he needs a letter. I mean, if he wants to put it through, but. Yeah, I, I, I personally um, really like the guy and what he's done. I spent a lot of time on his website, checking <laughs> it out. Um, it's just it's too bad he didn't have a relationship with Fitchburg that he could establish maybe hopefully next year. Um, if he tries again, he'll, yeah. he'll know to do that yeah. because uh, it, it was really engaging stuff that he was doing. Or but he anyway. can refute and come with a letter of support and tell us why it's related to Fitchburg and how he's going to yeah, advertise to Fitchburg residents. <laughs> it's up to the Mass Cultural Council sure. for that decision, but yep, you're right. Well, Joe, can we do roll call? Okay. Yes, Miriam. Yes, if he gets his letter with that condition. And there's no condition on the vote, so it's okay. a yes or no. Yes. Casey? Nope. Audrey? No. Tamar? No. Matt? No. Jim? No. Eileen? No. Claudia? No. The motion fails seven to one. It is not eligible for funding. Has anybody heard that commercial on TV where he says, no, no, nay, nay, nay? <laughs> We're beginning to sound like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Eileen. No. Okay. <laughs> Page three three nine application from St. Bernard's again. ID four zero eight six three first tech challenge team. This is science of robotics competition. Um, yes. Uh, can I just speak to uh, this uh, grant request, Arthur Leary O'Leary? He submitted a grant with us last year for a robotics STEM team. So he's coming back again for more equipment, I guess, for their STEM program. Yeah, I think- He it's never did get his program. Well, I haven't heard from him. He's one of the persons I haven't heard from. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I'm trying to get in touch with him. I think it's great to have robotics in Central Mass. I think this is an important Progress. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. I do too. Casey, what were you going to say? I think we cut you off. Uh, I was going to motion to approve, but I do have a comment retroactively. Um, looking at the uh, estimated number of people served is only 10 people. Um, and I do understand St. Bernard's is a very small school, but I am concerned about that low number. 
think this was just for one class, one class that he was teaching, right? It's not for the um, for the, the competition. I think it's not right. That number's probably for right. It's an after yeah, our school. Team. It's an after school thing. Yeah. yeah it's a team. So what was your motion, Casey? Uh, motion to approve. Second it. What was that, Claudia? Second? Yes. Okay. Anyone else speaking to the motion? Okay, Joe? Miriam? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Yeah. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. It is eligible for funding. Thank you. Page 349. This is Jeremy Roche from Fitchburg. This is for Fitchburg High. It's application 42802. It's media arts and it's for equipment for the high school. I make a motion to approve. I second that. That was Jim made a motion. Claudia seconded yes. and the motion. This, go ahead, go ahead, Jim. I was just gonna say this is being submitted by the principal at Fitchburg High School, Jeremy Roach. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I think this is yeah. a great project. Yeah. Okay, we'll do the vote. Miriam? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Audrey, I missed you again. Sorry, yes. I'm looking at you now. Okay. It's because I was Tamar. turning a page at the same time. Okay. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. It is eligible for funding. Thank you. Page 359. Three. Yeah, disability. It's uh, Carolyn Quirk Fitchburg Disability Commission. It's accessible art studio painting classes. Application 39467. Um, speaking to the uh, grant request, um, Carolyn Quirk has been doing this program for the last three or four years, and we've been funding here for that time. Um, and um, she just runs a very good program for our community. And she's asking for supplies, which you need. Yeah. Anyone want to make, so a I make a motion that we, I make a motion that we approve this request. I second it. The uh, first and a second from Eileen, first from Jim. Anyone want to speak to the motion? It's a great program. Joe? Hey, Miriam? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motions approved unanimously, approved for funding. Or Great. eligible for funding, sorry. Thank you, Joe. Page 365. Gentle Yoga for Everybody at the Fitchburg Public Library by Annabelle Labolita from Ashby. This is application 42695. Any comments, questions? Question uh, for Jim maybe, have we funded her before? No. Okay. Um, so I would like to see a letter from FPL. Uh, I know she said that she's spoken to Ashley. But yeah, but it didn't sound like a confirmation. Yeah, right, I, I think it would mean a lot if we could get a letter from Ashley, like written confirmation. I, I have a question. Go ahead, Claudia. Um, at this point in time, uh, would this be a virtual? 
the application is for in person. Yeah, it is for in person in 2021. So I'd also like to see a uh, pandemic contingent contingency plan. Anyone should be it should be in there. Does that it, a contingency plan? Mm -hmm. I wish the Mass Cultural Council had included that question in their application. <laughs> Well, we, we, listed, we, we listed in our guidelines, folks, so um, yeah. we really need to rely on that and making a decision and adding conditions after the fact. Mm -hmm. um, we There are some that we've already denied, and if we request that condition on that, we need to go back to the others and do the same, uh, to be she fair across the board. She hasn't put a letter in, right? Yeah. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I, I don't think... Uh, doesn't look like something's going to get done this year one way or the other. Motion to approve. Stacy made a motion Can to I, approve. Um, make a, uh, uh, speak to that. So we motion. have a motion, on the, there's a motion on the table. We need a, a second. Oh, second. Can we try our motion? Second. Then you can speak. There you go. Um, I suggest that we change the motion to vote on the contingency that they get a letter of support from Fitchburg. Specifically, from the Fitchburg should the letter be from the public library. It should be the venue agrees. Um, right. That would be up to Casey, correct? To change? Yes. yes. Are you changing it, Casey? I am changing it. OK. I'm Ooh. so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's job complicated. So we have a motion on the table to approve with a letter of support from the Fitchburg Library. Yes. Second that. A second from Audrey. Anyone else speaking to the motion? Sounds good to me. Let's have a vote. Okay. Uh, before I take a vote, Matt, are you keeping track of the contingencies? Uh, on that one, I am. Uh, yes. I think the only other one we had was the Chinden Festival or the Worcester Chamber. I forget which right. one. Yeah, I have it in my dialogue okay. here. So, okay. So, uh, for the vote on four two six nine five, Miriam. Yes. Casey. No. Audrey. Yes. Tamar. No. Matt. Um. No. Jim? No. Eileen? No. Claudia? No. Motion fails six to two. This pro project is not eligible for funding. Page 371, application ID 39616. This is the New Players Guild from Fitchburg, the Phantom Toll Booth. Again, we uh, partner with uh, New Players Theater Guild on a number of different projects over the last few years. And this is specifically for teens, which is on our priorities. Yep. Yep. Anyone Can make a motion to approve? Oh, sorry, did I? A second. second. That was Matt put a motion out and to approve, and Miriam seconded. Miriam seconded. Anyone want to speak to the motion? Okay, Joe, we'll do the roll call. Ariam? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. That is eligible for funding. Great, page 377, this is the Discovery Museum in Acton, Massachusetts. This is application ID 40419. They mentioned that they had 84 residents from Fitchburg visiting last year and it's roughly free or low cost visitors. And we have done this uh, program in the past few years. 
and they do have a letter of support from the uh, boys, uh, Fitburg Lemister Boys and Girls Club yeah. from the executive director. Anyone want to make a motion? Motion to approve. Second. From Casey, a first motion to approve. From Jim, a second. Anyone speaking to the motion? Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. Miriam? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? Yes. That was yes. Sorry to keep coming back to you. That's okay. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. It is eligible for funding. Tell me again, I got lost on that. Which, which number is that again? That was application, hold on a second. It was Discovery Museum, page 367, oh, application 40419. Okay, thank you. So now we're going to the Fitchburg Public Library, application 40738, page 387. A fascinating rhythm. And it could take place at the library or the Mill Street stage. Seems like a nice uh, creative uh, program. Um, and obviously the library may be a question. Uh, Mill Street being outdoors, Unfortunately, there's no letter of uh, support from, um, yeah, it was a new view that um, would program for Mill Street. It's um, when, when, when they, venue, when Mill Street. I don't think they need new views approval to have a performance well, the there. Can we imagine yeah. North, right? Part of the city? Yeah. So it is, it is a city property. It's a city park, so to speak. Um, it's, uh, it was built in conjunction with New View and the North of Main Group. And the library has been using the Bill Street space for their events during the pandemic. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think they just have to apply for a permit. Correct. We, okay. funded, we funded two of Ashley Kenny's programs last year. They still have to be completed. She filed for a, an extension, just so you know. Anyone want to make a motion? I make a motion that we approve this grant request. I second it. So that was Jim first, Miriam seconded. Anyone speaking to the motion? We'll do a roll call vote, Joe, please. Miriam? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia. Yes. Motion carries unanimously. It is eligible for funding. All right, page 393, the Aldrich Astronomical Society from Paxton. The applicant is from Winchenden. It's application 41581. It's for Tales and Tales Lore of the Night Sky for the Fitchburg Public Library at Performance. It's free. Sounds like a cool event, but he is not a Fitchburg resident. He doesn't have a letter of support from the Fitchburg Public Library. Um, have we supported him the previously? Were weird. I, I don't remember. I don't, I don't have any record of that. Okay. I'm also unsure of his answer for um, how he he will promote. It didn't sound like that he will be doing the promoting, or the Aldrich volunteers will be doing the promoting. Also, didn't name any specific people um, in terms of who will be, you know, who is putting this together. I know it's the um, the Aldrich um, organization in general, but. Uh, it didn't say who was going to be telling the stories or anything like that. Motion. Well, it, my question again is it, mentioned before. There's no. Uh, he's mentioning the uh, Fitchburg Public Library as a site, and there's no name of a, of a contact or a letter of support from the Fitchburg Public Library, and we need that. 
That's a fact. Motion to approve. Second. So we have a motion from Casey, a second from Audrey to approve. Anyone speaking to the motion? We'll do a roll call. Miriam? Yes. Casey? No. Audrey? No. Tamar? No. Matt? No. Jim? No. Eileen? No. Claudia? Sorry, Claudia, I didn't hear you. No. Thank you. Motion fails seven to one. That program is not eligible for funding. Page 401. This is the Laurel Wood Garden Club of Fitchburg. This is an arts beautification that will take place at Renaissance Park. This uh, Laurel Wood Garden Club has been maintaining this uh, trough uh, that used to be on the old Historical Society building on Grove Street. And now it's in the park next to our new city hall. They maintained it the last two years. Last year, it was gorgeous. Um, so they do some good work. And um, it's local. It'd be a nice addition to uh, the, uh, for that park, uh, given our new city hall. So I make a motion that we approve. I want to say I'm a member. I can't vote. Okay. I second it. So that was a motion to approve from Jim, a second from Claudia. Anyone want to speak to the motion? Have we approved the grants from uh, the Laurelwood Garden Club before? Yes, they have. <laughs> is, is that correct, Jim? <laughs> well, no, we have. No, we, no, we've never had a grant request from them. I thought we helped with uh, um, the, the Fitchburg Art Museum. Sort of uh, Art in Bloom. Art in Bloom? Yeah, didn't we help with Art in Bloom one year? We could have helped with Art in Bloom, but not through Laurelwood Garden it's Club. Different. Okay. It was through the Fitchburg Art Museum. Right. One from like just uh, planters in downtown, but I don't know who put in that application. Okay, so we have, we have two motions on the table. Anybody else want to speak to the motion? Joe? You look like um, you. Audrey, no. Uh, do we need a letter of support? I mean, they're in Lemonster. So it's, it's just she's the president of the Laurelwood Garden Club. But the mm -hmm. uh, the planter that they're using is a uh, a large planter that's in the Renaissance Park, and oh, they've been maintaining it for the last two years. This is their first request for funding to help support their efforts in beautifying that park. I tend to think of them. Maybe you could correct us, Miriam. I've always thought of the Laurelwood. Garden Club is a Fitchburg club. It is. It, it is. is. I think they just wrote, I they thought. had a typo on their application. She probably, well, she's from Lemonster, so she wrote Lemonster, even though it should be Fitchburg. Yeah, it might be where she lives, so maybe that's why. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to take a second look to realize okay, all, the, said, all, oh, the meetings, all the meetings are also held at the Fitchburg Art Museum. And all the uh, workshops and classes are also at the work at the Fitchburg Art Museum. And we also travel to different gardens. And we and this trough, this was a trough that was moved to the new area in, in, in City Hall. And every year, and whatever is not planted there, we planted, um, you know, the sign coming in from Lemonster into Fitchburg. There's a big sign that says, Welcome to Fitchburg. We put the rest of the bulbs and and plants there and it's it's beautiful every year awesome. and everything we all do the planting <laughs> keep up the good work Miriam yeah thank Keep you up. I was gonna say I I thought it was a Lemonster organization I was like that's so nice of them <laughs> yeah we, we planted all the tulips all the tulips planted by us all right, so let Joe, let's move it over to a vote. Okay, so Miriam is abstaining. So Casey, your vote? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. That our project is eligible for funding. That's nice. And who made the motion second on that one? I'm sorry. 
Yeah, sorry. The motion was made by Jim and Claudia seconded. Mary, Miriam abstained. Okay, thanks. So now we're on page 409. This is Friends of Cogsall, Cogsall Park. Into Again, they've been coming to us for requests for funding each year. Um, they, um, this year they're asking for three uh, concerts, I believe, at, uh, on Sunday concerts and always well attended right here in Fitchburg in our beautiful Cogsall Park. I make a motion that we approve uh, this grant request. Second. Second. I'm sorry, that was a motion from Jim. And who was the second? Was that Eileen? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Anyone speaking to the motion? We'll vote, do a roll call vote. Miriam? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. The project is eligible for funding. Thank you. Page 415, the Holiday Decorating Committee by Mr. Bill McSheehy. And it's uh, for decorating the common, the, the upper common. Those are the uh, Christmas lights that they decorate every year. Um, and so I make a motion that we accept and approve uh, this grant request. I second that. So that was Jim made the first motion. Claudia seconds the motion. Anyone speaking to the motion? I would like to clarify that they're holiday lights. There's no religious, uh, it doesn't push any religiousness to it. <laughs> Correct, yep. Anyone That's else? It. Okay, we'll move it to a roll call vote. Miriam? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. It is eligible for funding. Thank you. It's four, two, three. Pittsburgh Civic Days. I know we have this one every year, don't we, Jim? Yes, we do. Application Last ID year, obviously, it was canceled. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> Application ID 40442. I make a motion that we approve this grant request. Second. Second. Oh, sorry. That was so many hands. Who was second? Was that Mary? Arlene? Oh, yes. I don't know. was it Casey's? I thought I heard Casey first, but I heard everybody at once. So we'll put Jim first, and we'll put uh, Casey second. I heard Casey second. Oh, okay. So that was a motion from Jim and a second from Casey. Anyone speaking to the motion? We'll take it to a vote. Miriam. Yes. Casey. Yes. Audrey. Yes. Tamar. Yes. Matt. Yes. Jim. Yes. Eileen. Yes. Claudia. Yes. Motion carries unanimously. It is eligible for funding. Thank you. Page 429, William Williams from Ashby requesting for concerts on the common. No, Cogsall Park. <laughs> Mr. Williams has um, had uh, grants with us in the past. I don't think he submitted one. No, he did not submit one last year. Um, and uh, this request is again, as you said, Tamar, uh, at Cogsall Park. And this band uh, has been in existence as he indicated, number of years. So they're, they're proven performers in our community. And do they always play at Cogsall? Um, they've played at Hollis Hills, I think the year before. And they have, yes, they have done Cogsall Park a number of times. I've seen them perform at the Senior Center as well. They get around whatever venue will have space when they're able to get together. They're very good. Yep. All right, so do we have any motions? I we'll make a motion the week. Second. So that was Audrey. First, Jim seconded. Anyone speaking to the motion? We'll vote on it then, Joe. Miriam? Yes. Casey? 
Yes. Audrey? Yes. Amar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. It is eligible for funding. Thank you. Page 439, the Ethnic Arts Center of Somerville. The Fitchburg Green Acre children meet through their ancestors through puppetry. It's application ID 40193. And they have a letter of support from From the MOC, Monachusett Opportunity Council is supporting this grant request. Yep. And there's no cost. It sounds like a great program for the summer for the kids in that uh, area. Uh, low income and teens um, are in our priorities. And make a motion we approve this grant request. Second. So that was a motion from Jim, a second from Casey. Anyone speaking to the motion? I'll take it to a vote. Miriam? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. It is eligible for funding. Page 447. This is the City of Fitchburg Rec Department. Application 40022, Concerts on the Common. Free to These are, They're a summer concert program, and I uh, like to request that we approve this uh, grant request. I'll second that. First from Jim and a second from Claudia. Anyone speaking to the motion? The vote, please, Joe. Thank you. Miriam? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Tamar? Yes. Matt? Yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. It is eligible for funding. Thank you, Joe. Our final application at 10 minutes of six is from Randolph, Massachusetts, musicdance.edu. Application 39346, hip hop dance chair exercises for seniors. There was one observation I had on this is that the intent was to do this at the South Street uh, I think it's an assisted living and nursing home, um, but I didn't see any letter of support from them at all for it, yeah. which I found odd. And they're um, also from out of town. Yes, um, they have a firm commitment written in by Heidi Krause, but I would like to see some written confirmation from her on that as well. They've submitted grant requests from us before. Oh, that's good to know. Did we approve, Jim? Yeah. We did. This year was oh, yeah, music we have. dance. I recognize that. Yeah, it was from jazz to hip hop was their program this year. Anyone want to make a motion? Motion to approve. So moved. So that's a first from Casey. A second from Eileen. Anyone speaking to the motion? Let's vote on it. Eileen? Yes. Casey? Yes. Audrey? I missed you, Audrey. Yeah. And do the thumbs up <laughs> this time. I have, to, I have to remember to look over at you next time. <laughs> Well, this is the last vote. Uh, Tamar? Um, no. Matt? Uh, yes. Jim? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Claudia? Yes. Motion carries seven to one. Uh, it is eligible I, for funding. Sorry, you missed uh, Miriam. Miriam? 
Mm -hmm. That look of I'm disapproval. Sorry. I thought that I did. What's your vote, Miriam? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, the thank you. The vote stands at seven to one. And I were there any conditions Mary. on that one? I'm sorry. There were no conditions on that one. All right. So, Matt, is there anything you need clarification on? While we're all here, no, I'm having a brief technical difficulty on the table, uh, but. I backed it up with written paper, so I'll figure it out. A couple of fields, it's not showing up uh, when I type into them. Okay, if you have about who motioned what, just let me know. I, I took notes too. Okay. Okay, it's um, 10 of seven. We think we did pretty good tonight, guys. Thank you yeah. so much for hard work. Thanks. That was a great job. Thanks, Joe, for taking, uh, doing our roll call for us. And thanks to FATV for um, producing this for us live. Um, if anyone has anything else to say, please go for it. Otherwise, I think it would be a nice time to call it an evening. Well, could I just um, uh, bring up uh, in terms of a brief discussion about next week? Yes. What next week we'll be de talking about funding for each of these grants. And I guess what kind of homework should we be doing or what should we be coming in prepared to do? If you guys would like to have another five minute conversation or so. Um, we do have an email that came from the Mass Cultural Council, which gave us some information about what to do if we have extra funding, which we may have in our situation. Um, Joe, do you think now's the time? Maybe I could get you to show that. There were I, can, I can throw it up there and I can run through it real quick. Yeah, that would be great. And um, This would be our homework. I'll, yeah, and I'll, I'll make sure that a copy of this is sent to all of you as well so that you can, um, can think about how you want to approach funding for our, our funding approvals for our next meeting. Okay. So uh, there's a pretty high likelihood that we are not, we're, even if we fully fund all the grants that we've approved, we will have some money left over. And I want to draw, draw your attention down to the, the four items at the bottom. Uh, in particular, what we can what we can do when we're faced with the situation. So, number one, we already do. We already pull five percent for our administrative funds. In addition, we could take up to another fifteen percent to help fund one of our own programs. And this year, we do have Fitchburg Open Studios, so we have the opportunity to put some funds, more funds, into that program as well. The third item we could do is that we could. Um, fully fund all eligible applications, which, um, as I had mentioned, we probably will, will end up doing that. Um, well, we'll end up proposing that um, in the uh, in the meeting for next week. And number four is that uh, if we still have money left over, we could choose to do uh, throw in some of those conditional approvals, things we talked about earlier. We could increase the amount that we give to, to folks. So if there is a particular um, grantee or an event that uh, the council is so moved to vote on to fund more than what they asked, uh, knowing knowing that those funds will get used for the project. Um, we could also do that. And I believe that covers it. So those are the four options that we have to consider for when we vote on funding next week. How how are we going to know at that time that we're going to have a surplus if we're coming in? We haven't decided how much money to give to each grantee that we've approved tonight. Yes. So you're correct. So I've um I've gone through and I've I've calculated the total amount requested for the applications that we approved last week, and I made an assumption. Not that that happened today, but I made an assumption that all applications from tonight would be approved. And if we were to fully fund everything that we reviewed tonight, plus the ones we approved for last night, we're still falling short of the amount of money we have to give. So that, uh, and we had several applications tonight that we denied funding. And so that further uh, further grows the, the amount of money that we'll have left over when we meet to discuss what to do with it next week. So and what would you be sending us, Joe, in preparation for next week? Your calculations of what we've 
based no, upon no, 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 I'm not, I'm not calculating that. Um, that'll actually come as part of the, the discussion when we get to it. And Tamar will be putting that together. And she's probably going to need to work with you to make sure that we have the right um, funds that we're working from based on your reporting. But uh, what I'm going to say to everybody is things to keep in mind of what we can do with the extra funds and we can uh, just, just come with that knowledge and some of our own personal thoughts on where those funds should be spent. And um, I don't recommend that we entertain any of those options this evening because we don't know, um, we don't have time quite honestly, we have four minutes left. Um, I think it would get into a pretty, pretty lengthy conversation, but um, ideally we should all have a chance to think about it and, and come to the meeting next week with some ideas. So Jim, Thank Joe, you. So Jim, Joe would send us this list here or I can send it as well that came from the state. And then um, I'll work with you on the numbers between now and then. And then next time, if you guys can review that, we'll have an idea where we should, like Joe said, we should put the extra because we're gonna have extra looks like. We are obligated by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and Mass Culture Council to disperse those funds. That being the case that we may have some second thoughts on stuff that we weren't gonna fund. Um, should I hold off on putting out the uh, no funding letters? We can always resend after. I think it's important that we get the letters out on the uh, the votes for fund eligible for funding. We need to get those out now so that the, the two week appeal period can transpire before our decisions need to be submitted to the Mass Cultural Council. Yep, the, de the denial letters. Correct. And we can always follow it up. If we decide to fund something we denied, we can send a follow-up letter, letting them know that the council reconsidered. What okay. happens if um, we decide to fund a project that we previously denied, like, and we've already decided how much we're gonna give all the other grants? Because usually we try to okay. use the full amount that we're given, so. I'm not sure I understand the question. If uh, next week and the following week we use up all of the forty-five thousand two hundred thirty-six, and then um, the following, you know, at the next meeting, uh, uh, some grantees say, "Hey, like I would like to um, dispute," and oh, actually okay. they put a really good argument, and we say, "Yeah, we do want to fund you, but we have zero dollars at that point." How does that work? Yeah, so, so we we never send out our letters of awards until the appeals process is terminated. And that's a two week, that's a two week window from the time that's sent out. Right. Okay, so then we would just reallocate the so, budget. So, so next week, and I think we may be able to accomplish, accomplish it in one meeting, we'll vote on how we want to award the money. We won't announce those awards until those that were denied funding had the two week period in which to submit their appeal the Mass Cultural Council. All right. And if, if there are appeals, we have our appeals meeting, we vote again as if it was a new application. And if we decide to fund it at that point, then we have to have another vote to discuss how to adjust our grant awards that we've already decided. Uh, or we take up a collection. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Tamar, would you be able to, um, if you have time, I know that you're really busy, but um, if you have time to put up like a, a loose budget of how much open studios will be, because um, out of the 45,000, 15% would be like 6,700. Um, so I think that might be uh, something to consider as we're doing it. So I need to put together a budget for FOS as well and get that on a future. If possible, <laughs> or like a, a broad one, <laughs> just so that we have a good idea of how much we're going to need for it. <laughs> My best, Audrey. Okay, <laughs> seven o'clock. Last announcement. Yep. Don't forget to check us out on the Young Coffee Network, where me and T Casey will be uh, guest <laughs> starring on it. I don't know. Monday night. At 6 p.m. So on Facebook. Do we have a date for that, Audrey? That's next Monday. Next Monday. I realize I volunteered without knowing. 
I must, since they filmed live, I'm assuming the episode will be live, but Here. you never know. Always maybe they live. don't do it live anymore. <laughs> He's always live. We're going to do it live. There you go. We'll, we'll do it live. We're doing it'll be, it live. So, be socially distanced. distanced. That's good. That's important. Yeah. All right, guys. 701, who would like to make a motion? Motion to, to adjourn. Vote. That's a Second. motion. Do we need to do a roll call on this, Joe? A motion to adjourn from Casey. A second. Wave. Put your hands up on the camera after the CA. All right. And motion carries. And who was the motion in second again? That was Casey and Eileen. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night, everybody. See you guys next week.